When it comes to MC battles, Jay-Z and Nas reign supreme. Tense rivals for more than a decade in one of the most notorious rap battles in hip-hop history. The very idea of these two titans coming together is enough to make fans of the music sit up and take notice. But it's bigger than that. Hip-hop represents the streets where beefs have all too often ended in violence. In 2006, we're still recovering from the most extreme example of this. And with the stakes as high as ever, it would take no less than two giants in the game to lay down a new blueprint for hip-hop. That time is now. The two of you coming together at this point is not just important for music, but it's, in my opinion, it's important for the streets and the people that you reach through your music. So this is a very important moment right here, you know, and at one point in the midst of your beef, I had a chance to speak to both of you individually, and I said, and Jay, you may recall, is there ever the possibility that you would ever work with the man sitting next to you? There wasn't collaborations before anything happened, so you know why would it happen after? So now the streets is watching, they're definitely talking. Why here and why now? It's bigger than both of us because it's not really about us. I mean, it is, but it really isn't. You know what I'm saying? It's more so about the, the culture and also about the ending and also about showing people another way. Because what we staged was something just stopped the world for a second. But it was always respect. It wasn't a point where, you know, he wanted to gun me down. I wanted to gun him. It was never that, you know, because that's not how I think how real bosses move or how real men move. I'm a fan of rap, you know, and um, I don't have to front like a lot of artists today want to front and um, be as big as the biggest ones were. Like, they want to go from zero to 60. As soon as they start their career, they come out slandering people, acting, you know, crazy. And, and, and this is another another way for it to go. I mean, even in the mix of everything that we was going through as far as battle, which was a battle, you know what I'm saying? You know, there was a, a, a deep respect there. I mean, to, to go at someone like that, you have to have respect for them, or else you wouldn't care. You just brush it off like it ain't about nothing. And respecting the rap game at the level of Jay-Z and Nas means more than just talking the talk. It means you gotta walk the walk, which is what these two titans did in front of 20,000 fans at Jay-Z's I Declare War concert. This is for our culture, this is for hip-hop, we love y'all! What was originally meant to be a lyrical smackdown for Jigga's foes instead became a statement of unity. The moment you guys met on stage, at the I Declare War concert. Describe that feeling. What, what did you feel at that point? It was unreal, surreal. It was a second of like, you know, uh, are we seeing that? Then it was this pandemonium. It was crazy, it was chilling, and I felt like, wow, dang, this is that moment. And then, there may have been other times when I'm like, wow, I, I sold a lot of records on that album, or wow, I did, I made history right here, but it's like, dang, this, this, this moment right here, I never saw it coming. There was any reservation still, at that point it was all gone. Like, yeah, you know what, we are doing the right thing. I wanna ask you guys now, you seem like you have a great rapport. You know, you guys seem like the energy is right. I'm feeling the energy in the room, you know, and, and the world is stopped once more because of Jay-Z and Nas. But what is the nature of your relationship now? Are you friends? Somebody asked me that the other day, I was like, this, you know, this isn't like high school. You know, you don't sit down with people and be like, you know, so, so we friends now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It just, that's just, that's just not a reality, you know? But anything that's, that's shrouded in respect can grow. I mean, what was the first thing you guys said to each other? I don't know if you remember, but the first thing that happened is we gave a pal and bust out laughing. Yeah. Why? <laughs> It's funny, because <laughs> yeah. it's one of those things, like, at the time, you would never think would happen in life, and it's happened, so it was, it was like, it was funny. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh. Like, look where we at right, right. here. While this new move is a positive thing for the hip-hop community, it still has some people speculating. In an unconventional move, Nas distanced himself from his longtime label, Columbia, to join forces with Def Jam, where Jay-Z is currently president. So, does that make Nas Jay's employee? Let me ask you this, because it, it puts you, you know, from hip-hop or music in general, just the way the community is, it's all about appearances. 
and perception. So are you concerned with the appearance that Nas scored well in the battle, but he just signed to Jay? Jay wins the war. Not at all. Me coming over to Def Jam is, I bring, I'm bringing something to the table. I'm equivalent to 20 of these artists. You know, not Def Jam, Sony, or whatever. I'm just saying, wherever I go, and the bottom line is the movement is bigger than what someone says about Nas for the moment. I've always had someone say something about me. I'm one of the most crucified artists in the game. And when people have negative things to say, it's all good, man. And I think that they really, really, at the end of the day, respect the move. And they really do understand the move. Mm -hmm. Really do. We're thinking bigger than, you know, what was said on the record. We're thinking bigger than, you know, what people perceive this as, mm -hmm. you know? We're thinking as grown men, and we're also thinking as responsible grown men. We've been chosen as leaders. We have to lead. We can't follow what people's perception of this union is, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? I didn't, sign, I didn't sign Nas. I partnered with Nas. I mean, you, you can't sign an a, a artist of Nas statue. Mm -hmm. You can only partner with him. The moment has arrived for two of the illest MCs in the game to reconcile their differences and come together for the sake of hip hop. You can't sign the artist of Nas statue. You can only partner with him. Ending the war of words, rumored to have begun a decade ago when Jay Z sampled Nas on his first single, Dead Presidents. He wanted me to say it over for him live, but I didn't really know him. The two got at each other with some of the harshest battle raps ever recorded to determine who was not only the better MC, but who rightfully deserved to be crowned Rap King of New York. The King of New York thing, the, the you know, is that thing that's, that started rap. Hey, little soldier, you ain't ready for war. ROC too strong for y'all. How much of Biggie's rhymes is gonna come out your fat lips? Wanted to be on every last one of my classics. The lines were drawn, and fans had to take sides. Jay! All I can say is Nas. Jay-Z. Nas really ripped it. I don't like Jay-Z. QB prevailed. Of course not. A lot of slurs thrown, a lot of horrible metaphors thrown back and forth at each other. And at one point, you even challenged Nas to a boxing match. That's light. That's gloves and headgear. You know what I'm saying? That could have been. That wouldn't have been nothing. That would have been nothing. You know, saying boxing was a clean way. I wasn't on the radio saying, you know, when I see him, it's on. Just, you know, ridiculous with it. But when you're in it, you're in it. And nothing gets in the way of a lyrical assassin with the score to settle. In 2001, Jay-Z gave hip-hop an uncut dose of verbal venom with the release of The Takeover. Debuting the track at a concert sponsored by New York radio station Hot 97, Jay took aim at Nas and his Queensbridge running mates, Mob Deep. That struck a chord in the Queens MC prompting Nas's planned retaliation at the same concert a year later, a performance which didn't happen for fear of elevating their mere battle to uncontrollable beef status. I had a big show put together. I was going to actually crucify Jay at our 97 show. When that battle was going down, when it took place, was there anything that he said that made you go, ooh, he hit me hard with that? Nah, because I was in it. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't viewing it from, from a statistical point of view. I was like, you know, I felt there was things that were said that was on, over the line that made me say things that was over the line. And since you infatuated with saying that gay yes, she was kissing my you was kissing that oh. It's unsaid things, like, you know, where you from, where we grew up. Mm -hmm. And once you say certain things, you know, you cross the line. In 88, you was getting chased to your building, calling my crib, and I ain't even give you my numbers. When, when you heard the verse from the takeover, it, it didn't at all make you go, damn, Jay ain't playing, he's serious. Yeah, honestly, at first I was like, whatever. But the streets wasn't letting me let it go like that. Mm -hmm. So, and then I had to really pay attention. And when I did pay attention, I realized it was, it was really on. It seemed like that battle kind of, not you, not that you were asleep, but it kind of sparked you. Yo, I know you ain't talking about me, dog. You? What? Brought out the old nasty Nas. Oh, yeah. In the midst of a battle, you know, you, don't, you never know how it's going to turn out because everything's at stake. So it was like, I thought it was personal. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, it was on. In the takeover, you summarized Nas's career to one hot album in a 10-year average, and then 
he went on to imply that the knowledge he kicks is garbage. When the war is going on, all you're trying to do is you're trying to you're trying to point out things that is popular. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That you gonna get the most people. One line that I think, when everybody knew that Jay had the gloves off, was the line in uh, Takeover that, if I could paraphrase, where he says. Uh, yeah, I don't want to say the line <laughs> yeah. that he said. <laughs> because you know who. I did you know what, but you know who. But we're going to leave that between me and you and just kind of left everybody hanging. And it turned out that um, he was alluding to your, your, your child's mother. How do you respond to that? Because no matter what you say, that's a hard line. Not very many people come back after that. The takeovers, that was like the figure four leg lock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you can't get out of that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't escape that one. So it was a whole level of respect. Like, OK, the whole level of respect. And I just lit a back. bomb. Put your soul like ether. Will. Teach you the king, you know you. Nah. God, son, across the belly. Lose. I prove you lost the race. <laughs> <laughs> So as the smoke clears on one of hip-hop's greatest feuds, fans and followers everywhere have one question. What caused the dramatic change of heart? I think there was a, a moment even when Jay was like on the radio and he was like, yo, you know, mom said chill. His mom was telling him it was like, and my mom, bless her, mm -hmm. was listening. And I was like, wow, that's what I knew we both went too far. Mm -hmm. How does that make you guys look, though? If you make this big stance that we're coming together, forming a union, y'all saw what happened. You saw what happened with Big and Pac. They never got a chance to resolve their situation. Look what we're doing as Jay-Z and Nas. After Big and Pac left, I, there's a lot of MCs out there, but I really don't see many that really stand the test of time that, that are true warriors. And when we went to war, we killed everything out there. There was only me and him left on the battlefield. What else do these warriors do? Do they still fight it out to the end, or do they now come together? It's like saying Frazier and Ali, like, you know, things were said then, but, you know, it's in the spirit of competition. I, I for not one second could ever say I don't believe that he's one of the best lyricists ever. But you still got a lot of people, Nas, that want to get at you on the mic, that want to get at you on records, on wax and probably will. They're gonna make fun of y'all union. They're gonna say, look at them now. They, they friendly, they nice, they're hugged up. It's not that we hugging up and all that. We, we, we showed the world something for ourselves and for the fans. We did this for them. They can have that. Hang the post up, I'll sign it for you. Mm -hmm. But that's done. Now we're moving on. They gotta, they gotta let it go. Let it go. Let it go? Let it go. OK. <laughs> With Jay and Nas off of each other's radar, it seems other MCs have set their sights on battling these two kings of rap. You and 50 have been at a war of words for the past however long, a year or so. And same now with you and Cameron. I've never really been in a word war mm -hmm. with 50. You know, 50 uh, came up with me. You know, like, I, had, I brought him on tours with me, and I like him a lot. I had a lot of love for him. And um, to tell you something real, I think what happened was he was hurt by me, by certain things he thought that I did were against him in certain ways that he didn't understand moves I was making. And his thing is, you know, he's going to say whatever's on his mind. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, he don't know when to stop. And I think he just got to get those things off his chest. But I've never really had any word plan. Of course, I say a little things here and there. But you know what? At the end of the day, I know it was hurt. Say, for example, in your case, Jay, you got an interesting dilemma because now you wear a suit and you wear the hoodie. You know, and you got a former artist that's getting at you. The thing to me that got you to the position you are now was your credibility as an MC. But man, if you move as an MC, how does that affect your right. credibility as a CEO? Well, I don't think I don't think the record questions, I mean, or ever could question my credibility as an MC. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not it's not um, anything challenging enough or artistic enough. It's not even well thought out, so I don't think it challenges anything. I mean, it's just how I feel. If you listen to the song, if I say somebody looks like a camel, they look like a camel. If I say somebody has sandals on, they have on sandals. If you retaliate, so whatever, we'll be prepared. And if at some time, I feel like swinging back, like the narrow and heat, you know, cleaning that garbage up, you know, I might do that. You know what I'm saying? But 
it, it's nothing that deserves my immediate attention. Okay, well, that's what I, because you two are like the two deadly, um, deadliest MCs to ever battle. Okay, let's call it that. And I know it was in your heart, man. I know y'all hip hop. You want the record? Ask for it, man. Just okay. say, yeah, you got the record. Yeah, yeah. The J. Give me the record. You want it, right? The record is. You want to hear it, right? You want to hear it, right? So I want to know that you made it. <laughs> Did you make the record? No, no, I didn't make it. I ain't make it. You haven't made the record. Not yet. Not yet. But there's always a possibility. Yeah. But if someone comes out the Nas, y'all team now. You guys got to protect your investment. What does that mean? Does J come? to Nas's defense at some point? Does Nas come to Jay's defense? Honestly, I don't really see any competition his way coming at him to support me to come for his defense. I don't think he sees any competition my way. I don't, we haven't had one conversation. I haven't talked to you really about right. that. Maybe once or twice, little small things, but that's all it is. I haven't seen any real threats. I've only seen how this has threatened them. All beats aside, this is a business. And it'll be interesting to see how President Carter deals with an artist who's enjoyed more critical acclaim than commercial success. Your last two albums, Street Disciples and uh, God's Son, people will argue that, you know, it wasn't commercial enough. That's not necessarily good business for someone like you. Yeah, but so. don't turn me into just the guy <laughs> with the suit, you know. I think we should double the chorus type of guy, okay? <laughs> Don't turn me in that. I'm a creative guy. Let's not forget art can sell. You ain't got a you ain't got a front all the time on your record. You, art can sell. He's proven that, I've proven that. Jay, let me ask you this, man, because you you collaborated with big name artists in the past. Um, namely Art Kelly. It didn't go too well, you know, in the end. Did you have any concerns? with Nas at all. That's different, like we made an album together, me and R. Kelly, this is Nas's album. You know, it's, it's his artistic um, direction and expression and where he sees himself going. Nah, I'm talking yeah. about like you ain't here. Yeah, like yeah. put it like this, like I look at this cause he's an MC. I would love for this man to be around while I'm making this and, and vice versa. We have an understanding of music which makes, makes our bond better when we're talking about creating and when we're talking about art. You know what I'm saying? So that's what the process is like, I feel. With the business of Nas and his album settled, the question remains, will Jay-Z, the MC, ever bless the mic again? It's been a lot of speculation that you're gonna come back with an S. Doc Carter album. What's that, cause that's not a Jay-Z album? Like, that, yeah. makes, that makes me a different person? Hey man, you, you know you're a tricky guy. You know, it ain't so always what it seems. So <laughs> you know. <laughs> Personally, I feel like um, Jay, I feel like you gotta come back out. That's just me because you know, if, if if me and him don't do that, you gotta, we leave a lot of people out there that's like, what's going on? I'm curious to this too, because uh, we discussed this before when um, you were actually promoting the Linkin Park album that you did, the possibility of you two doing an album together. At that time you said no. Right. It looks like it's more of a possibility than ever right now. Is that possible that Nas and Jay would do an album together? Well, first things first. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. I ain't, I ain't ready for that one. Yeah, I want to breathe yeah, on that. Let, let us walk. Let yeah. us walk.